Hey, beautiful day today, nice and cold. Got, um, got to do things a little bit intentional these days, like plugging in. When it's cold like this, we plug our cars in because we need that block heater heating the engine so that it'll actually start later. So we have to be intentional like that. Just like this, wearing this block heater, you know, if we don't do that, all the heat rises out of our head and we freeze. I, I really feel for you guys down south. You guys are getting all these storms and traffic jams and stuff like that. Like we have names for stuff like that up here. It's called like Tuesday. Happens all the time. We live in it, so we're used to it. And you know that we're placing concrete today outside into ICFs. So come into my office with me and we'll talk about it. And I'll explain how we do that in these kind of weather conditions and we do it successfully. Okay, back in my office, nice and warm, and we can start talking about cold weather concreting. Nice place to do it here. So we've been doing this for over 25 years and trying to teach you guys that we can do this, and a lot of guys have caught on, but right now we're seeing momentum. We're seeing on social media a lot of confirmation, a lot of really good jobs. And in fact, if you go on social media and you look up ICFs, Insulated Concrete Forms, you're going to find groups like the ICF Builder Group, and there you're going to have really high quality contractors that are working together. It doesn't matter what brand of ICF, they're all working together and helping the industry grow. And it's so encouraging to watch the posts because the posts are really well done. And the, I love going through the responses to see what the comments are. And most of them are really good. You got the, the odd guy that that has to put something in there, but the other guys will police it pretty good. And it is showing momentum in a big, big way. We're watching this industry grow because of everybody out there on social media and the guys just on sites doing really good work. But we're seeing that confirmation with cold weather right now where guys are on site doing it in cold weather and posting it. And thank you for doing that. So we've put out this document I'll put some links up top here. It's cold weather concreting. Uh, if you go to our, our website, foxblocks.com, 1.06.08, you'll find that in the resource library. And it inside here, you're gonna find all of the criteria, everything you need to know about doing it successfully. And if a building inspector has an issue with, or an engineer has an issue with placing concrete in cold weather, show them this document it should help you. And they can phone us as well, that we will do our best to help you guys out. Now there's a few things you need, and that is proper concrete delivery, because the concrete has to be delivered at the right temperature in order for this to all work. You see, the, the science behind it is, if concrete's at the right temperature when it's placed, as it sits and stiffens, it goes into this hyd hydration process and that actually will build up heat. And it's that heat building up that will make a successful job because that heat will last. I've had jobs in cold weather, I mean really cold weather, that were done really well. And seven days later, there were puddles on top of the wall at minus 20 degrees Celsius outside. And that's very, very possible with insulated concrete forms because the insulated concrete form gives such a, a really well-protected shell and you do a good job protecting it everywhere else and you're gonna have that happen, it's just natural. And really by code, you only need three days of concrete cure, unless you put an additive in, like an accelerator of some type, then the code allows you to get away with 48 hours and then the, and then the wall can go below freezing. So let's, I, I did a job two, three years ago. This job was, it had all the right stuff in it. And by that, I mean, it had some issues. It had some snow in the wall. It had some things that could happen on a real life job. And I wanna show you how the contractors addressed it, how they placed the concrete, and how they contended with cold weather. Because that, all those things have to happen, and then you get a really successful job. And I did, 
I was invited on this job. I got to do all of the videoing. And then I, I was able to go there two days later and the temperature only got worse. And two days later, I went and tested it and it was no problem, it passed. It was a really, really good job. So we're gonna look at that now and we'll see. I'll, I'll be able to stop it and talk about different things that they did. And this is the practical and this is the important stuff you guys need to know in order to have your jobs good. So let's look at this now. Hey, we're placing concrete at minus 18. And this is very doable. We do it often. And in, up here in Canada, we don't stop. We just continue to place concrete. And if you see here on the street, the concrete truck, they come preheated. All the, all the aggregate is preheated. The water is preheated. And so we're putting it in the wall at the right temperature. And the trick at this temperature is you can see the sun dog up in the sky there. Okay, we have sun dogs. Okay, we're starting to place concrete. I'm gonna pause it here because I wanna show you a few things and highlight how to properly do it. These guys did such a good job at a cold temperature. Now look at this guy here. He's got um, a lid for, con for um, covering the top of the wall. He, what they did is they bought sheets of EPS and they cut them the width of the foam. So this was an eight inch job. So they cut them 13 and a quarter inch wide would be ideal you probably get away with 12 inch wide. Put that on top and it's gonna hold that heat into the wall. So now you got the guy, concrete guy hanging onto the hose and he's placing concrete. The consolidation's happening right behind him and this guy's covering up the wall behind him. Now they're doing two foot lifts and that heat from that two foot lift is rising up and heating all the rebar in the wall. This guy on the side here with the orange pail, he is drizzling water in the bottom of the wall and getting rid of that skiff of snow that might be in there. We just wanna make sure that it's gonna be concrete against concrete. If you have an inch of, foam of snow at the bottom of the wall, the concrete will not melt that. It will create ice and you will actually have an eighth inch gap between concrete. That's unacceptable, you can't have that. You have to clean out that snow. So here he's on the other side of the window. He actually bent down and did it under the window as well. So he has done a very good job. We went around there and washed it. He did all the way around first and then they started placing concrete. And that water will not freeze on top of a cold footing. We have these footings, it's air temperature, same as the air and it does not freeze. So now the guy here with these pieces of foam, he's taking them off again so that the pump can come by and do the second lift of concrete. And they will cover it again behind him and keep that heat into the wall. See, if you don't have that, the right temperature in the concrete, the concrete will not get into hydration. And if it doesn't get into hydration, you've lost the wall. So it's, it's important to be very intentional as you do these cold weather pours. So now we can see he's, Let's see here, he's still going, this is the second lift. Bounce around there a little bit. But you can see now like they're waiting for the next truck. So they've got the wall all covered. Done a very good job. Now they're at the top of the wall. You can see the steam rising off of it. Not too concerned about that because there's so much mass in that wall now and the rebar is all covered. So now we can actually be a little bit more patient with it. Go and trawl that all off, get our heights right get the anchor bolts in and then cover it up. Now in a case like this, they're using foam, they'll drill the anchor bolts in after. That's a very typical way to do it because they just cannot afford to have that metal from that anchor bolt sticking up in the air and drawing out the heat from the wall. So that's, that's just one more thing. Here you can see the guy drizzling the water into the wall. Like I said, every ready mix truck has hot water. It works great. It doesn't freeze to the concrete footing. We do it all the time. So now I've come here two days later after the placement and we're measuring the temperature of the concrete. So this is 48 hours later. We just use a turkey or a meat probe and it worked really well. Like there's different ways. I've used probes that are right set into the concrete and I've done that so many times. We've actually done testing as a company and with Blue Max we did that and ARCs. We, we tested in cold chambers to 
just to get the engineering so that it would work and so we knew what we needed with our concrete. And that's what our tech bulletin shows you. So if you go to the tech bulletin, you'll find that. But this here at 48 hours, it measured 61 degrees Fahrenheit, I think it was, 16 degrees Celsius, something like that. And that's that's great. 48 hours later, we know that's with a, a meat probe. So we know that the temperature in the wall is even better than that. So that mass is really working. I did measurements down six inches above the footing as well. And that also was above freezing at 48 hours. So it never did freeze down there. And top of the wall was even, even better than this. So this was at the middle of the wall. Look at the icicles on the side of the wall. That's a very typical thing on an ICF project. You do the consolidation and it just puts the pressure against that EPS and, and it will actually push the moisture out. And it'll be clear icicles, sometimes a half inch thick, running down the wall. And those walls just burn off in the sun, just evaporate after a week or so. Or we just break them off when we're doing the waterproofing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that helps you guys out. If, if any of you guys have learned any better ways to do things, please comment below because we always invite that. It's the guys out in the field like you that are really making this industry fly. And we're learning from you guys. I've learned from you guys for over 25 years. I'm not this good. It took you guys to make me as good as I am. And it's because we work together that this industry flies. We'll continue to do that. Keep posting the good stuff and we'll see you in the next video.